It's opening night at the Women's College World Series. The crowd filing in to watch the big names. Sam Shaw is here with OK State. So is Amanda Lorenz in Florida. It's time to shine on the biggest stage. Every player here has dreamed of this moment since the first time they picked up a bat. Will the Pac-12 rise again? Will there be a Cinderella story? Welcome to the Women's College World Series. And we welcome you to opening night in Oklahoma City. We've already got a couple of winners from earlier today. Arizona and UCLA moving on. We've got Alabama and Oklahoma late night tonight. And we open up the evening with Florida and Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls knocked off the defending champs Florida State to get here, while the Gators are looking for a third national championship in the last six seasons. I'm Beth Mullins along with Jessica Mendoza, Michelle Smith, Holly Rowe also with us tonight. We already know one of the games tomorrow on Winner's Bracket Friday night. And what a game it's going to be, Arizona and UCLA. Beth, that's how I was introduced to softball. I grew up outside of UCLA. Arizona would come in, and you're talking the best players at that time going at it. The tradition continues. Absolutely, and the pack is back, as we like to say. And also, they proved that just like last year, if you can get the ball out of the yard, it's going to make a big difference. You're going to advance. Those two programs have combined to win half of the softball national championships. Let's talk Gators and Cowgirls in our opener tonight. And Michelle, Florida has really come on in this postseason due in part but to the play of their seniors, Amanda Lorenz and Kelly Barnhill. When you think of those two athletes and the careers that they have had at the University of Florida, it is just outstanding. They are a huge part of the success all the way around. Amanda Lorenz is the one person you went in the box when the game is on the line. She can hit to all fields. She has tons of energy. Her on-base percentage, her batting average is highest ever for the University of Florida. She just brings so much energy and the fire in the circle. Kelly Barnhill can bring it. Her next strikeout will be her 12th a rise ball that's explosive on so many different levels, a great leader. They have been to the Women's College World Series three of their four years. Look at these numbers, gaudy, a 400 plus batting average, an ERA just over one, and the strikeouts and the on-base percentage. These two ladies can do it all for the Gators, and they are a ton of fun to watch. And they will be facing a familiar foe in Sam Shaw, who started out her career, Jess, in the SEC, transferred to Oklahoma State, and here she is ready to go in the circle and at the plate. Beth, you could say that Samantha Shaw was one of the most talked about softball players in the country this season. Why? Because she's a stud. She can do it on the mound, all planes, a change up, a rise ball, a drop, and then she's got the bat to back it. A little bat flip, a little emotion. She's dynamic. She will get her team going. She leads them. She is their star. And honestly, she is one of college softball's biggest stars. Four and one so far in this tournament for Oklahoma State. As we get set for first pitch, our double elimination format. A winner tonight moves on to play again tomorrow. The loser here will have to try and fight their way out of the loser's bracket starting on Saturday morning. And Kelly Barnhill in the circle making her appearance in a third World Series in four years for the Gators facing Riley Bayless. The lefty right fielder will step in first. Senior out of Kansas City, Missouri for a cowgirl team making their first appearance here in eight years. Under the direction of fourth year head coach Kenny Gajewski, an Oklahoma Sooner in charge of the OK State softball program. He's a winner of a national championship himself with the Sooner baseball team.
And our first look at Kelly Barnhill, a roller coaster ride for this Florida team throughout the regular season, but they have come together. And Kelly has taken charge in the postseason, starting with the SEC tournament. As the Gators came from the middle of the pack to win the tournament, and it rolled on to this Women's College World Series, seven and one, has only allowed five earned runs in nearly 60 innings to get the Gators back here. And she'll open up with the strikeout of Riley Bayless, one down. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups. And for the Cowgirls, it features Maddie Sue Montgomery playing in her 242nd career game, none of them bigger than the one she's playing in tonight. She is their all-time RBI leader, and she will bat third in the lineup behind Sam Shaw. Samantha has set the new single season home run record in her one and only year in Stillwater. She's got 18 of them. And you may have heard of her uh, flipping a bat or two in a celebratory fashion before taking her time rounding the base pass. Third team All-American. She too has World Series experience from her days at Texas A&M. Just didn't think that was the right fit for her or for the Aggie program. And there was a parting of the ways, and Sam has found a, a new home in Stillwater. And was a huge factor as they shocked the softball world going down to Tallahassee last weekend to upset the defending champs in the Supers. And Sam Shaw has just thrived at Oklahoma State. The graphic we just showed, 18 home runs this year, 23 total in three seasons at A&M. Shaw lifts one out to deep right center, and it's gone! What a debut for Shaw and the Cowgirls, the home run off of Barnhill. This is an 0-2 count that she gets this pitch. You think first pitch, she takes a strike. Second one, she chases, fouls off the rise ball. And with 0-2, Kelly Barnhill wants to get this even more up and out. This is not a bad location, though. It's on the outside part of the plate, and it's continuing to go up. But Shao does an excellent job of meeting the ball, driving it out to right center. Well, one of the things that Barnhill has struggled with her last two years, giving up that home run, especially on an 0-2 pitch, Jess, as you mentioned, 19th home run that Barnhill has given up mm -hmm. this year. She gave up 21 as a junior. So adversity immediately for the Florida All-American, and they are making some noise in that Oklahoma State dugout. As Kenny Gajewski, their head coach, told us yesterday, we like to live loud inside this program, and they are living loud quickly as Montgomery steps in and faces the 1 1 count from Kelly Barnhill. Senior out of Burleson, Texas, has not missed a game in her career. Pops it up to the left side, and coming on to make the catch is Jade Carraway, two down. We know Kelly Barnhill can be dominating. That first strike out of the game was her 12th in her career. Why? Because she can throw to all fields. She'll throw a drop, a two-seam pitch low. This is the pitch right here, the high rise. That's where she needs to throw it when she's ahead. It's the mid rise that she needs to be careful with as well, making sure that she can attack hitters. But ladies, you know, you have got to be very careful where you put that ball over the plate. We saw earlier in the first couple of games that ball's leaving the yard a lot today. We look at through the first two seasons, 12 home runs, but the last two years, 40 of them have left the building. 
because I think a lot of hitters, powerful hitters, go up hunting that high rise that's just not high enough. Michaela Richburg, the sophomore, and a broken bow, Oklahoma. And a 2-1 count, second team all Big 12 performer. Cowgirls finishing behind Oklahoma this year in the Big 12. And joining Oklahoma here at the Women's College World Series. Things could get a little nutty this evening with Oklahoma playing Alabama in our second game tonight. Got a lot of local fans. Mm. They're all still coming in, Oklahoma State, and then Oklahoma in the nightcap. Hall of Fame Stadium here in Oklahoma City. Full count to Richburg. And Barnhill, a couple of strikeouts in the first, but Sam Shaw sends a message, Smitty. Samantha Shaw with the shot. This ball going out of the yard, her 19th home run of the year. None bigger for Samantha Shaw and the Cowgirls. Samantha Shaw out in the circle, and as the lead, uh, courtesy of herself, a solo home run to get the festivities going as Oklahoma State Jumps out on top, our Capital One starting lineups for the Florida Gators. A lot of Lorenz and Lindemann all year long for this Florida offense, and things really took a big turn for them when Hannah Adams moved into the three spot in the lineup. She has been their best hitter in the NCAA tournament, batting over 400, and she will be manning that three hole behind Lorenz and Lindemann tonight. So critical for this Gator lineup to get production from the other seven against Samantha Shaw, who has played against Florida before from her years at Texas A&M. 0-2 in her career against Florida and has been lit up, including four earned runs allowed in just one and a third innings at the World Series a couple of years ago, looking for a much different outcome here tonight. Well, she gets their best at the beginning. Amanda Lorenz, no doubt about it, Smitty. You talked about it off the top. She's the best hitter, not only on this team, but arguably in the country. Senior out of Moore Park, California. In her third Women's College World Series, 263 career games. She has reached base safely. And 96% of those, that's how fabulous she's been. I like talking to her yesterday about Samantha Shaw. She's faced her in the past, and what do you know about her? And obviously the, the reputation she has coming in. She's like, eh, she's got a drop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just that total, you know, just the confidence, not letting, even if it was the best pitcher in the world, it'd be like, yeah. She's got, you know, five pitches and throws 78, but, you know, <laughs> I got her. Here's the 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. Lorenz drives one over the head of the right fielder, Riley Bayless. Amanda, thinking about third, will hold up at second. And the leadoff double for the Gators. This is crushed off the bat, and the hardest ball to get is the one hit right at you. She goes upstairs to get it, but watch Riley ba Bayless two steps in, and that's what gets her. Even if she had stayed where she started, she would have caught this ball. But because she ran in twice, two steps, 
Ball ends up over her head. Junior Kendall Lindemann. We've talked about this being the year of the slugger and being the year of the big name transfers. Lindemann fits both of those bills, has the home run power and a two-time Big Ten Player of the Year at Minnesota for her first two years. And made the move last fall to join Florida. And wouldn't you know it, both the Gators and the Golden Gophers make their way to OKC. 14 home runs on the year. Chopped to third, Pennington checks the runner. One down. Samantha Schall has that ability to move the ball through the zone, but it's the drop ball at 62 miles an hour that's been so effective. She will throw that rise ball at the top part of the zone and the off speed at 47 miles an hour. She's gonna need to keep the ball low and slow to keep these Gators off balance. And Adams. So she's coming off a weekend where she beat Florida State twice and now trying to take down Florida here in the opener of the World Series. Did not give up a home run ball last weekend in the Super. And that's saying something against that lineup. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because Florida State, that's how they won a national championship yeah. last year. They bashed the ball out of the yard here in Oklahoma City and continued to do it all year long. Our winners earlier today both slugged two home runs, Arizona and UCLA. Beth, when we did the lineups, there's a reason why you highlighted Hannah Adams. This is the person I circle. Not because she's the best hitter, but she's the most important hitter in this lineup. Where she hits and how hot she has been. Fly ball out to left, and that's Chelsea Alexander. A missed opportunity for Florida with Lindemann and Adams to try and drive in Lorenz. So with two down, it's Jamie Hoover, who was the hero with a walk-off to get Florida here in the Supers last weekend over Tennessee. Well, missed opportunity, but also non-productive outs. Keeping Lindemann, excuse me, keeping Lorenz at second. Two fifty-two for Jamie with the seven home runs this year. And the walk-off win last week, so make it two years in a row that Florida has walked off and walked into the Women's College World Series. Two years ago was Jordan Matthews. This year, Hoover, the hero. And that's really what Tim Walton has been waiting for all year, mm -hmm. other players to step up around Lorenz and Lindemann. They have had eight other Gators drive in runs during this NCAA postseason beyond just Lorenz and Lindemann. And that's a big reason why they're here after a 500 season in the SEC. To the right side, back in the hole goes Maddie Sue. And Lorenz stranded after the leadoff double. Shao's home run has the pokes in front. Here at the Women's College World Series, kind of a cool reunion of sorts happening tonight. The head coach of the Florida Gators, Tim Walton, and the head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowgirls, Kenny Gajewski, were once on this same team. That's right, they won a national championship together at the College World Series for the Oklahoma Sooners in 1994. Possibly the best dog pile photo ever. Tim Walton <laughs> was the winning pitcher in two innings of relief work. Kenny Gajewski, a key part of that team. They have been best friends for decades, guys. In fact, Kenny Gajewski was working as a groundskeeper at Oklahoma, and he told the softball coach, Patty Gasso, you should probably hire Tim Walton. So they have gone on to coach together, win a couple of national championships together, and I loved the pregame handshake. These two best friends, they kind of went in to shake hands, and then they were like, what are we doing? Let's just hug it out. Oh. But they said it will be kind of an emotional night tonight, definitely trying to win for their teams, <laughs> but two longtime friends. They had a Tommy Boy moment there, Holly. Brother's got a hug. 
And Kenny, a part of Tim Walton's staff at Florida when they won the national championships in 2014, 2015. Tim was telling us uh, Kenny's sister uh, has a local uh, restaurant and that she has always taken care of their pregame and postgame meals whenever they've come to town. It is uh, now for Tim Walton 10 times and they have played in the Champ Series five times in the last decade, winning those two titles. Really along with Oklahoma, the fight is on right now for a dynasty here at the World Series. And that's popped up to left. Caraway tracks it down in foul territory. It's five, six, and seven due up here in the top of the second. Not always the easiest thing to do when you're playing families. That you know, usually when you're you're uh, playing against another team, you, you try to make it as personal as you can. We want to beat the pants off of those guys, and when it's your best mate, yeah. that's not not the switch that you're used to yeah. turning on all the time. A heck of a moment they had winning the national championship together as players and then as softball coaches. No bigger fans than really the entire Oklahoma State Athletic Department. Their golf team made a nice run deep into the postseason. The, the baseball team actually playing across town tomorrow. They're part of the standing room only crowd here at Hall of Fame Stadium tonight. And a, a former cow poke herself in the booth with us, Michelle Smith. You know what it means to yes. everybody in Stillwater and all the alums here in OKC for the cowgirls to be back as Cheyenne Factor draws the walk. Holly? Well, guys, it's really neat that the Oklahoma State baseball team is here um, because that young lady who just got that walk, Cheyenne Factor, her brother Cross is on that, on that baseball team. They are starting their regional play tomorrow against Harvard, and they are playing in OKC at Bricktown because they've had over 13 inches of rain the last two weeks. So they are deciding to play on a little bit better conditioned field. So they were able to come over here, get in that standing room only, but I love it that her brother Cross is here watching her draw the walk, get on base in her first Women's College World Series. It's pretty exciting. I know all of Stillwater is uh, obviously following the softball team and has all year. Kenny Gajewski has done a great job turning the program around and getting it back to the Women's College World Series. Kyla Naomi, the freshman shortstop. Step it in on the right side. Thought about the bunt. Well, one of the big things Kenny did, right, Michelle, was to, to bring back the, the players, uh, yes. the alums from the, the Sandy Fisher era and all the success that Sandy had as the longtime head coach. Absolutely, he brought Sandy Fisher into town. He said, hey, this is our history and our team is, is gonna know about it. And then that's what every great program does, yeah. though. You know, they involve the the historical past, the successes, and they want to build on it. Teach these younger athletes that are playing just how long the, the team, the program's been around. And a strikeout for Kelly Barnhill. Two down. That is Kelly's third already tonight. The Barnhill going down in the zone. She's been using the rise. This is the two seam. It's going to have a little bit of dip, late movement, late run. Sydney Pennington, sophomore from Sand Springs, Oklahoma. A lot of local talent on this roster for Kenny, who has sort of embraced uh, being the newbie here in our night session, Tim Walton. 10 trips to the World Series. Patty Gasso, 13. Patrick Murphy, 12. This is the first trip for Kenny. And the current crop of players outside of Sam Shaw. Two forty-three on the season for Pennington, who has some pop in that bat. This is where 
Kelly Barnhill, and for all the talk of her two seam, the stuff that she's added to be able to go down in the zone, the fact that she can manipulate the zone of her rise ball at different heights is just mean to hitters. The steely gaze on the delivery into the dirt. Good snag by Jordan Roberts. Sydney Pennington, and talking to Oklahoma State yesterday, so many of their hitters saying if they see anything belt, which normally that's like the cookie zone, right? right? Belt high is what you want, but they know that's gonna end up at their chest. The thing is, Kelly can start it just below the belt and end up at that high strike. Such a hard pitch to hit. Two, two ripped foul into the crowd. And then this is where right now, Kelly Barnhill just needs to elevate to that next yes. level. So she almost got burned right there, going back to that kind of mid-level rise ball, which you get for a strike early in the count. But right now, with two strikes, she needs to go up out of the zone and get a chase. Jammed her in foul territory. Hannah Sipos has it on the dirt. Side retired. one nothing Oklahoma State in front on the Samantha Shaw home run. The year of the slugger in college softball has carried over an opening day at the Women's College World Series. A couple of taters for the Wildcats in the upset of Washington in our first game today. And then Bubba bangs one out. So did Aaliyah Jordan for UCLA. Jolly Roger, thank you very much, Kirk Walker. As the Bruins rolled over Minnesota, Four home runs in the first two games, already one here tonight. Double elimination format in Oklahoma City. The losers will come back and play on Saturday, but tomorrow night is about the winners, and it's Arizona and UCLA yes. again. Wow. First meeting in the uh, World Series since they played for the championship in 2010. And the home run ball responsible for eight of the 14 runs scored so far on this opening day. All of Arizona's runs off the home run, a solo and a two run, and four of the seven for UCLA. So productive getting the ball out of the yard. And Shaw adds to the list for Oklahoma State a new single season record for them this year, 81. As Sophia Reynoso will take her chances. Five, six, and seven due up here for Florida. They got Amanda Lorenz into scoring position in the first inning and then went 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. And the infield pop up to the right side. Maddie Sue is there. One down. And the Women's College World Series continues with the championship finals and the champ series will start Monday night Best two out of three on ESPN 730 Eastern. For more info, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships as we are now into the 15th year of the Champ Series. It started with that memorable Michigan win over UCLA in 2005 on the Samantha Finley home run to win game three. On just how it's a series and how that's affected the programs you now with pitching staffs versus riding one arm. Development of the game. Well, how many of the super regionals, you know, yeah. went through, half of the super regionals went three games, just showing that's that's how softball is now. There isn't just one dominant team. Had eight game sevens in the regional round, so half of those were pushed to the limit. Roberts gets a hold of one and belts it out of the ballpark. The long ball strikes again and the Gators tie it up. Sam Shaw's favorite pitch to throw is a curveball away. She doesn't throw it often, though, because this is what can happen. It doesn't get a lot of break. And what a beautiful swing by Jordan Roberts. I mean, this is like on a tee away. This is how you teach hitting, what to do with an outside pitch, driving it out to right field. Then the reaction from Jordan Roberts 
her ninth of the season. And we're knotted at one here in the bottom of the second. How about that? 10 of the 15 runs today scored via the home run ball, including both here tonight. Well, both home runs tonight have been misses by the pitchers. And we still have Oklahoma leading the country. Yeah. I think Arizona tied them today for most home runs. And Alabama top 10 in the country in home runs this year. And that's why as a pitcher, you have to have a short memory. You've got to be able to turn things around in an instant. You give up a long ball. You got to say, all right, what did I do? That pitch was supposed to be lower in the zone. I got to go back to locating. It's all about location, location, location. To be honest, a few years ago even, a lot of home run hitters try to pull both those pitches that we've seen, and then they're not home runs. I mean, the level of hitting, the understanding of really hitting the ball for power where it's pitched. Jordan Roberts and Sam Chow both went with their home run balls. First home run in a month for Jordan to get the Gators on the board here in the bottom of the second. They come in as the number five seed even though they were the sixth place finisher with a 500 record in the SEC. Well, it just shows what winning the SEC tournament does mm -hmm. and how much credibility that the selection committee gives to winning that tournament. Well, I think more so, though, to the non-conference schedule in the non-conference. Yes. All, all of that. And this is a very different Gator team since that comeback win against South Carolina in game one where they won six to five. They were down. They scored five runs in that to walk them off. This has been a completely different Gator team, especially offensively. Holly? Well, you know, there was a kind of a Tim Tebow moment to go into that SEC tournament where Mississippi State, they beat them, and it was a terrible game. Kelly Barnhill actually went to her teammates in the locker room after that game and apologized. She vowed that would never happen again, and she went to work. Since that moment, she's been different in the circle, and that is one of the big reasons why they are rising towards the end of the season. Yeah, the numbers for Florida, so different. After she took ownership at that moment. And, and you guys have sensed it too, watching her during the season. There's just something, there's a different feel about her this year after she did not make the U.S. national team over the summer and the drive she has shown to try and win a national championship and get another crack at that team next year, which would be an Olympic year for Team USA. Caraway chops it right back to Shaw, rifles it over to first, two down. Well, Kelly Barnhill is that typical pitcher that's a perfectionist. She wants everything to go just right. Well, things haven't gone just right for her, and and she's come out and, and had to, it's, it's humbled her a little bit. She's worked hard. She's always been a very hard worker. But I think that that message to the team was like, look, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna work harder to keep teams closer and take some pressure off the offense. That had been struggling to score runs. Say, look, it's okay. I know you're gonna score runs for me, but I'm gonna be better for you. She's also become aware, I think, of the camera down there spying on her in the dugout. Nice grab at third by Sydney Pennington. Side retired, but not before Jordan Roberts sends another one into the gallery. It started last year, actually. Um, it was a SEC play against Florida, and it was against Kelly Barnhill. And I hit a ball that hit off the left field foul pole. And at that time, that was the furthest, hardest ball I've ever hit. And I actually stood there and watched it. Well, that was the genesis of the bat flip that has made so much news this year for Samantha Shaw. The home run by Samantha. It was a similar throw of the bat, uh, but not the slow walk around the bases. 
It was more of a tumble than a uh, flip. Well, she could flip it. Like, she, I've seen yeah. her actually take the bat and full on flip it. That's just more getting it to your on deck bat, helping them out. <laughs> So they don't have to they run don't too go, far. They don't yes. go walk as far. We, we <laughs> share that story because, as you can see, she's got her batting helmet with her. Sam is due up third. It's nine, and then the top of the order here for Oklahoma State. The Shaw home run matched by the Jordan Roberts home run. Opening day at this Women's College World Series. Double elimination format. Two teams will be left standing on Monday to start the best two out of three champ series. You lo lose today, you're into the loser's bracket and a long way back to the finals. But it can be done. It was done last year by North Florida State. One and two to Chelsea Alexander in the nine spot in the order. The sophomore, a 276 hitter on the season. And you see 33 of the 36 champs were a opening day winner. So not easy at all if you lose your first game. And into shallow center, one down. Alex Voss makes the play, and here comes Riley Bayless for the second time. Riley uh, struck out in the first. Riley struck out a lot a few years ago. Riley also walked a ton two years ago. In a conversation with Kenny Gaieski, he said, hey, we got a lot of good players on this team, but we need you to swing the bat and make contact and make things happen. And that's what she's been doing the last couple of years. Well, and that was 70-something walks. She's got 47 this season, which is still a significant number, but absolutely, she brings energy, she brings pop. They need her right now. She is hitless so far in this NCAA postseason. Just a terrific personality when we talked to her yesterday that the whole team really so excited to tell their story, get this program back at the Women's College World Series for the first time in eight years. Lays off the high rise there. We spoke with Riley yesterday, her game plan. She was right up front with us. She's like, I'm going to hit Gar Kayla Kelly Barnhill by getting up in the batter's box and on the plate. So she's crowding the plate, trying to get up. Usually that back foot's in the back end of the batter's box. And the idea is to, for her to be able to get to the rise ball before it gets to the point where it's unhittable. And everyone's got their own method, and it's really sometimes just mental. And she will move around the box, different pitchers. And typically a rise ball pitcher will tell you that it's tough to get a ball, a rise ball specifically, past someone up in the box. Runs the count full. Look at this pre-pitch. I mean, she's a, she's a boxer. She's a little dance. She's got the mouth guard in, ready to step in and fight. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> she had that same Literally. amount of energy yesterday, too, when we she were talking did. with her. <laughs> she didn't want to leave. Uh -uh. <laughs> Here's the 3-2. Bayless got under it. Out to right, Hoover fights the sun, makes the catch, two down, and here comes Shaw again. Be interesting to see how they throw Shaw hitting the pitch. That I, I thought it was a well-located pitch. I, I agree with two strikes, it could have been more out of the zone, but it was a good pitch from Barnhill, and, but it was away. Side corner. Let's go back to that first at bat. Reached up and out for that and sent it out. Where do they come? First pitch of this at bat. They hit that inside corner. Try to jam her. Well, and this is where you have to take into account the athlete. When you're pitching against someone like Sam Shaw, you she's six foot two and she has a very long reach. So you have to adjust your waist pitches according to who's in the box. And Barnhill didn't. That pitch, again, 0-2, you want something that they need to get on a ladder to reach, you know, for a, to, for a waist pitch or a setup pitch. Foul back, straight out of play. And, uh, part of the beautiful new facility that is almost completed here at Hall of Fame Stadium, new 
press boxes, you can see the girders on either side. They're gonna add a second level of seating here as the game continues to grow and more and more people are trying to get tickets. There's our location. Uh, one of the hottest tickets in all of college sports to get to Hall of Fame Stadium to watch this World Series. Infield grounder to Lorenz. Three up and three down in a 1-1 game, mid three. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. I don't, it's just a joke. It's not something that I honestly like. Like it's just, they make fun of me because I love the game so much. So they call me Mandy Softball. I don't even ever get called Mandy. It's just funny. <laughs> oh, it's for the love of the game that Lorenz gets a, a little good natured ribbing from her teammates and Tons of film work. She's a student of the game, and uh, there's the payoff. I mean, the OB of over 500 for a career. Are you kidding me? Especially someone who can hit anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. To take your walks knowing, probably could have hit that, but this pitcher doesn't want to give me anything. Couple of home runs. We are even. Oh. Opening night here at the Women's College World Series. We move to the bottom of the third. Alex Voss, and then the top of the order, so we will see Amanda Lorenz coming around again. Doubled in her first time up. Right back up the middle and a leadoff single for the number nine hitter, Alex Voss. So now Lorenz has a chance to do some damage with a runner on base. The double out to right center, the first time around, and then she got stranded there as the Gators went 0 for 3 with a runner in scoring position. And so you've got Lorenz and then Lindemann behind her stacked up here for the Gators. And Alex Voss now with her sixth hit in the last three games has become a mainstay for them. The go ahead run on base for Florida. It trickled away from Mackenzie Thomas was able to find it. Well, that's always been the key for this Gator offense is getting folks on base in front of Lorenz so she has to be thrown to. Shao catches the outside corner and uh, Amanda Lorenz says, whoa, whoa. Not sure if she agreed with that one. I don't think I'd go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You can get that pitch called to drop. It's a little off the plate. Oh, I'm sorry, it was no, no. <laughs> she definitely did not agree. Tried to come in on her, that's a fair ball, stepping on the bag for one out at first, and Voss able to beat the throw to second. This ball hit really hard right at Richborn's gonna go to short way, obviously pick up the out, now it's a not a four, so the tag has to be applied. It's just not in time. Naomi gets it down. Voss runs very well. Able to move the runner over for Lindemann. And here is the challenge for Kendall. Her last home run was on April 13th, so it's 21 games with only five runs batted in. And she was telling us yesterday she feels like the pressure of weight has been lifted by getting through the Super Regionals to get here to Oklahoma City. And she was confident she'd be able to swing the bat much better. Well, I think you have to tell yourself that. You get here to Oklahoma City, but she still knows how much pressure there is batting after Amanda Lorenz. I think it helps Jordan Roberts hits a home run, so just getting more production. The more production you can get after Lindemann, the less pressure she will feel. 
But this entire season, it really has been Lorenz and Lindemann. That's how they score runs. And Coach Walton talked about Lindemann that you know, she's a streaky hitter. And so if we can get her on one of those streaks again and putting some, some really good contact out there, it's going to make a big difference. It's been six weeks. That's her last home run. She still leads the team with 14. Trying to rediscover what she called a confident swing that saw her hit six game-winning home runs in league play this year. But there you see the numbers on Lorenz and Lindemann as opposed to the others. Just that was a lot different in the postseason. Yes. Lindemann out to center. Factor has it. Two down. Big for Sam Shaw right there to take care of Lorenz and Lindemann. to fly out to left her first time up. This is a good test, especially early on for these Florida Gators. First game, both at bats for Hannah Adams. She's had a runner at scoring position at second base. This is who Tim Walton highlighted to us, being in this three hole since the SEC tournament. He asked her, right, if she wanted the job. She said, absolutely. And he said, she's got the guts, she guts, was the phrase he used. To be in this position right here for Florida, trying to grab the lead. One of the things that Hannah Adams does very uniquely, she starts with that front foot open, which we see a lot. She'll keep that front foot open. She really doesn't get it all the way closed, allowing those hips to clear. So right there, that last swing, basically what it does for her, not for every hitter, it does make it harder to reach the outside pitch, but she keeps that front foot all the way open. A lot of times that's called stepping in the bucket. She actually just starts in the bucket, stays in the bucket, but it allows for her, her style of swing, to be able to clear that front hip and utilize her biggest asset which is her backside and her hands. Shao tried to jam her, full count. Alex Voss, the single, moving over to second. Adam snared at first base by Richburg. Might have saved a run right there for Oklahoma State. We're going to talk with Tim Walton when we return. And terrific D from Michela. Got it. Still tied at one. The second batter of the game gets up, and Kelly Barnhill gives up that home run to Samantha Shaw. But what has she done to improve after moments like that and get locked back in? Yeah, I think on that pitch in particular, I thought she really it looked like she tried to overthrow a little bit with an 0-2 count on a you know most powerful hitter in their lineup. So I just think she just tried to do a little bit too much, and then since then she's been trusting her stuff and being able to locate a little bit better. Lorenz gets on an extended at bat from Hannah Adams. What are you guys seeing that you're starting to get to a little bit with Sam Shaw? No, I think the contact's been good. She's been able to throw her change up when she kind of wants to, and uh, you know being able to throw her drop ball and getting some uh, you know getting some strikes there with it. But I think we're just you know we're definitely uh, you know trying to hunt the ball, uh, get the ball up in the zone a little bit more for us. Uh, to be able to put better swings on him. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Thank you very much, Holly. And for Kelly Barnhill, the three innings of work, the one hit was the home run ball, three strikeouts, and this was the pitch that Shao sent out. Mm. What Tim Walton was just saying, it's a great pitch, unless it's two strikes, tried to overthrow it, because yeah. she knew, hey, this is their big dog. And she tried to really really get it, but ended up throwing it too, too meaty for Shao. Three, four, five due up. This is the all-time RBI leader in school history, Maddie Sue Montgomery. 
A fly out to left the first time she faced Barnhill tonight. Has overcome a, a significant shoulder injury, an ACL injury, has not missed a game in her career, and that includes uh, seeing Kelly Barnhill probably more than she'd like to go for seven in her career against Kelly. But Maddie Sue has really come to embody this Oklahoma State program. And then when we asked her about what, why they're here, what's their story, she, she told us we're that little girl out there on any ballpark in America that's just playing for the love of the game. And that's how they see themselves. And a called strike three from Kelly Barnhill as Montgomery is retired, one down. Fourth strikeout for Kelly Barnhill, starting to settle in a little bit more and really use the corners. Look at the location of this pitch. It's a low rise ball in the outside corner. Great rotation, great location. That's really what it's all about. Spin, speed, and location with pitchers. Michelle Richburg, the strikeout victim, her first time to the plate in foul territory and off the fencing. This is an Oklahoma State team that had kind of been just cruising along and ran into UT Arlington about six weeks ago. And got smoked and lost. Didn't like the feeling of that at all. Well, they have since won 18 of their last 22. Their only losses were to Oklahoma and Florida State. Very strong second half for the Cowgirls. And that hits Richburg. Well, the WNBA is on ESPN2 Friday at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, when Brittany Griner and the Phoenix Mercury host the reigning rookie of the year, Asia Wilson, and the Las Vegas Aces. Liz Cambage, the biggest trade in the WNBA this year. She is set to make her debut for Las Vegas. She just, you know, scored 53 points last year year in a game Friday 10 p.m. <laughs> Eastern on ESPN 2 and the ESPN app if I could clone myself I would and be oh. working both games tonight and tomorrow night that is why she is the Hall of Fame stadium reporter Holly Rowe ladies and gentlemen she basically almost was reporting from the mm, WNBA exactly. game mm -hmm. and doing this game it's Kobe, Kobe Bryant and his daughter his daughter's a really good player they were uh, at the Las Vegas game the other day Beth Mullins along with Jessica Mendoza and Michelle Smith here in the booth. Holly doing her thing, roaming around Hall of Fame Stadium, bringing you all the news. Big news so far today has been the year of the slugger has uh, become the day of the slugger opening day. And we have a monster mash tomorrow in our first game winners Friday night, Arizona and UCLA. It's gonna be a fun one. It's a lot of history. Oh, how about 19 of the 37 national championships have gone to the Bruins and the Cats? That includes seven times head-to-head -head in the finals. I hope all the alumni call them and just yes. tell them. I mean, they probably already know, but how important that is. Hey, this was the super regional matchup last year. Oh, remember yes. that yep. in at UCLA? So, yep. and, and remember the wars that the. the, the Tweeting wars that we're going back and forth. They're pro they've probably already started. Yes. As you know, we do not check our social media in game. <clears throat> What's that look? <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> One two from Barnhill here. Now to center, cruising over is Voss. She's got it. Two down. Washington and Minnesota will have to try and fight their way out of the loser's bracket Saturday morning. See if they can follow the same path that Florida State took last year to win the national championship. Now batting number nine, Cheyenne Factor. 
Barnhill continues to use that rise ball, pitches up in the zone so effectively. Just one ground out so far. So as hitters, it's at some point you have to make those adjustments, figure out how to get on top of a ball or get under it and hit it out of the park. Here's the out distribution. Freshman Cheyenne Factor hit a grand slam in the regionals against Tulsa and hit a big home run in game three of the Supers to beat Florida State last week. As Holly reported, uh, an older brother on the Oklahoma State baseball team, two older brothers that she used to follow around on the playing fields. Her teammates call her Big Leaguer. She's had some big moments this year. And a lot more to come, just a rookie. Yeah, she has a, a bit of a, it's not even so much swag as it is just this casual coolness. Like, Oklahoma City, World Series, like, I got this. <laughs> Well, that's what you want to a point. You want your underclassmen who finally you know, get here, have the opportunity to learn and then build the program to try to get back here. We, look at Oklahoma, they're a perfect example. Mm -hmm. That senior class this year, it was so outstanding. And that, that's what Kenny Gajewski is trying to command and build. Behind the bag at second, Hannah Adams has it. One left on a 1-1 game. Holly will chat with Kenny Gajewski when we return to opening night. I have been here at the World Series, won a national championship as an assistant coach. I just wondered kind of what the nerves and butterflies are like for you leading your team here for the first time as the head coach. You know, I think it's okay. Um, I think we've handled this well. Um, I think for myself, honestly, seeing Tim across the uh, way is kind of a comfort um, to see him there and to know what that's all about. So I've had a blast. I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm loose. I feel loose at least. I think our team is is loose. So uh, I feel hey. like something weird's happening behind us. So I think they are loose. I don't know yeah. what's happening. But uh, Samantha Shaw, second batter up, she gets up, hits the home run. What what kind of confidence do you want her to pass down to the rest of the team right now? Well, she just leads. Uh, she leads in so many ways. She hits. She pitches. She talks to our young kids. She's just constantly working to help this program improve. And I'm just so proud of her. Perfect. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. I, I just, I just want to give you a hug. Thank you for being part Aww, of our interview. Thank, well. you. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was Raquel Dominguez stealing the show right there. Pound in the water. Ten seconds. I hope there's a bathroom in those newly improved <laughs> dugouts down there. She, Ra Raquel, might need that a little bit later on. We're at Hall of Fame Stadium, opening night of this Women's College World Series, double elimination format. But obviously, the longer you can stay in the winner's bracket, the better off you'll be. The winner's Friday night, tomorrow night. If you can go 2-0, you've got almost a 90% chance of reaching the championship series, which will get underway on Monday. And this the 38th rendition now of this Women's College World Series. First time that Guy Eski and the Sooners have been here. since 2011, and the infield pop-up. Easily taken care of by Richburg, one down as Hoover is retired. It's four, five, and six, so the home run hitting Jordan Roberts will be coming up right after Sophia Reynoso. Reynoso, an infield pop-up in the second. Sam Shaw, the home run in the first. Roberts countered with a long ball in the second. Nice changeup by Shaw, dropping that pitch down to 55 miles an hour. So she's throwing three speed. She also has a drop. She'll work low in the zone at around 63, and she's been pumping up some of her harder stuff up near 66, 67 miles an hour. Back to back. Mm. Two and one. 
Always love to do that as a pitcher. Double up. Yeah. yeah as, a hitter, as a hitter, you don't expect it. You're like, okay, cool. She wasted that one. She's not going to go at it again. I'm sitting hard. And Boom. Right also out in front. And that's the key. When you throw that off speed a couple times, then you can get up underneath the hands and try to, to jam up, just make that barrel a little bit late. Gives you a little bit more confidence to try to, to work on the corners or underneath the hands. It's about that setup pitch, thinking two or three pitches ahead. Mm -hmm. To third, Pennington sat on it. Hit her foot. Hit her foot, foul ball. Front foot, and this is what a dropped off ball will do. Sometimes you hit it off your shin. She got lucky in just the toe. It still hurts, but it's a dead ball. Scooting up in the box here, just adjust there. Started back and then moved up. Choking up. I mean, it's interesting to see her comfort too, because Sophia not only will move in the box while she's in it, but I've seen her climb her hands up that pad with every single pitch. Every pitch, her hands will go further and further up that handle and they'll just start to continue to move. 3-2 pitch. Grounded to short. Naomi got her. Two down. So here comes Jordan Roberts for the second time. This is what she did the first. Pitch elevated in the zone, right above the knees, and she just gets extended, drives it out of the yard. That's a four seam over the top drop that just does not get down. It's elevated. Roberts punishes it. So this is what I always wonder. Every time I hit a home run, I knew exactly where they were going to throw me the next at bat. It yeah. was like my favorite at bat is after the home <laughs> run because if I hit an outside pitch, yeah. they're coming in. And right there, Jordan Roberts, yes. I want her sitting inside swinging at that pitch. Off the end of the battle, knuckleball out to second, scooped over by Montgomery with the glove. Side retired. Six in a row for Samantha. 1-1 one, one game. Chow lifts one out to deep right center, and it's gone! Roberts gets a hold of one and belts it out of the ballpark. Couple of home runs, one for Samantha Shaw, one for Jordan Roberts in a 1-1 game as we head to the top of the fifth on this opening night at the Women's College World Series. Double elimination format. Beth Moens, Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza, and Holly Rowe with you tonight. On deck, we've got Alabama and Oklahoma in our fourth game of the day. Earlier today, Arizona beat Washington, and UCLA topped Minnesota to stay in the winner's bracket tomorrow night. 7-8-9 due up for Oklahoma State. Kelly Naomi struck out in the second. Four strikeouts on the night for Kelly Barnhill. Has not given up a hit since the home run to Shaw in the first and has limited the Cowgirls to just two base runners, a walk and a hit batter. Well, Oklahoma State's been making some adjustments. They've really been connecting or laying off pitches. They've only had one swing through since that first inning where they had five swing and misses, so they're identifying pitches a little bit better. There's another one. And we haven't seen the strikeout or the swing and miss at the pitch way out of right. the zone. Yes, they've had swing and misses. They've had four strikeouts. But even the four strikeouts, Smitty, three of them were on her lower rise that's through the strike zone. And that last one there was, a, was that two seam again, low in the zone. One, two to Naomi. Got her. Strikeout number five for Barnhill as she stays low in the zone that time. Well, and this is where you zig and zag as a pitcher, so you know that they're laying off some of your high stuff. It's not as competitive, so you go back downstairs. This is that two seam that's just going to dump down. That's a, a non-competitive pitch, but really Naomi's striking herself out in that situation, chasing a pitch out of the zone. 
Well, Kelly Barnhill is trying to overcome an unusual injury tonight on her pitching hand. If you notice on her fingers, her middle finger of that pitching hand has a little Band-Aid on it. We get a foul ball there. It is an unfortunate, what I would describe, cooking incident. She <laughs> put a pan on, which we've all done this, and she put the wrong burner on. So then she went to put, grab the pan handle, and the pan handle was hot. So a little burn on that middle finger. I saw in um, social media pictures that she had it all taped up during the week this week, trying to get that to heal. Just a little Band-Aid there today, but an unusual burn on her finger. I'm sure she's like, come on. Yeah, that's a scary phone call. We You're the Tim World Wall. Series. Right, Holly? I mean, Tim gets a call, and it's like, so I was cooking. It's probably like, okay, we're not doing that until the World Series is over. Her pitching hand. Well, and that's your rise ball finger. That's what I always like to call it. Like your index finger, your middle finger, your longest finger. It's the last pitch. It's the last finger the, the pitch comes off of. It seems to be uh, not bothering her here in the top of the fifth. <laughs> Strikeout number six. And so she goes back to that two seam. You can see the way she curls over her shoulder over the top rotation of this pitch. So she's been going backward rotation with the rise ball, a little bit of lean forward with over top rotation and gets that ball to, to sneak out and down just a little bit, picks up her sixth strikeout. Number nine hitter is Chelsea Alexander. We knew Holly Rowe was the hardest working uh, woman in television. Now she has proved it tonight. She's reporting from a softball game, from a WNBA game <laughs> and the Food Network. <laughs> <laughs> That two-seam fastball, Smitty, that's the difference at Barnhill. And we've talked about her mentality, too, but that pitch that she can throw down in the zone, and we've seen it, especially this inning, really come to life and throughout the season. But her ability to throw a pitch down in the zone. And the reason is, what did we talk about earlier with the low rise? Try to hit on top of it. Try to get a ball on the ground. Okay, if that's your mentality. Now second time through the lineup. And then she goes down. You're going to swing over the top. Three up and three down. She's beaten Bobby Flay and she's beaten the cowgirl hitters tonight. One hit allowed so far for Kelly. Side by side looks at these two home runs from Samantha Shaw and Jordan Roberts. And how about the same guy collecting them both just when your day couldn't get any better? You're joined by Holly Rowe. Well, Mitchell Walls from Huntsville, Alabama is waiting for the next game, but he's been put into action here in the outfield. <laughs> what happened on the first home run? I was just sitting here watching and I was like, surely that's not going to come my way. And here we go, make a catch. So. And what happened on the second home run? Well, the guy sitting beside me here, I said, man, we're not going to fight over it because I don't want to take one in the face. So if you call it, I'm going to back <laughs> off. And they, we got the kind of flying around, and just I called it that one too. So. All right, are these your kids? Uh, two, of them, two of your kids. Are you guys proud of Dad? Did you know he had this kind of game? No. <laughs> <laughs> they are uh, here. They're here supporting Alabama. Very proud fans of Claire, Claire Jenkins. She's yeah. from a hometown nearby them. Good job, man. Thank you. Very good job. Roll Tide. <laughs> Always got to get the roll tide in there. And uh, the uh, the first catch on the left, he had both hands available. Second catch, oh, the, even save the, the beverage. frosty beverage. <laughs> save that. <laughs> oh, now a photo oh, op. Selfie, photo op with Holly Rowe. I like how there's some communication. Mm. They could have fought over it. They didn't have much time to communicate. That ball was leaving the yard And quick. he did not want to take one off the face. That was fabulous. And the kids are like, oh, I, think, I didn't think he'd I catch think, it all. I think that might be terminology for oh. I didn't want to drop my beverage. <laughs> Good stuff. Big day for the home run hitters. That was the difference in the Arizona game. They beat Washington. Jesse Harper, Deja uh, Mulipola hit him out. UCLA. Bubba Nichols, Aliyah Jordan went deep in UCLA's win. They uh, handed Washington or uh, handed Minnesota the loss. Seven, eight, nine here for the Gators. Jade Carraway a ground out her first time up. Apparently 
plays off that, three and two. What a terrific season it's been. So much parody around the game. Got one of the old timers, Florida here. Oklahoma State here for the first time in a long time. And a road that uh, began back at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Michelle gets the out on Caraway. We're going back to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson next February. Michelle Smith, we're ready to unveil another team. The field of 16, we know these guys are in. How about and that? How about the defending champs? Florida State's going to be there again. They had a fabulous start to the season this year. Well, they went through Clearwater and they looked like they were in championship form, like they never had an off season or a fall season. They were just on fire. What a great event. It's like a mini Women's College World wow. Series. And all those teams, a lot of them that participated said, hey, this, that was a big help to really catapult our younger athletes, get them to understand and feel that big tournament pressure early in the year. Cheyenne Lindsay is your pinch hitter right here. Tim Walton going to the bench, short game. And that's usually the best matchup for someone who throws the ball down in the zone like Shao has been doing. A batter that can pound that drop ball and run. Of course, you have to be wary about keeping those feet inside the batter's box. Any part of that foot gets outside the chalk. Upon contact, you're out. O2 from Shao. And gets the whiff. Two down and the first strikeout for Samantha. And she gets it after going to the drop ball. Coming back to the rise ball. And this is where it's sneaky. We've seen Br 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 Barnhill do the opposite. Go up, 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 and then down. And now Shao coming with the rise ball, her number three pitch. But look at Lindsay's head and eyes. They're looking down. That's how she gets her up. Alex Voss singled in the third. Got in the scoring position and got stranded. Grounded to second, Montgomery. Easy pickings there. And another three up, three down inning for Shao in a 1-1 game. Here in Oklahoma City for the Women's College World Series. Molly McGrath, Caleb Bro, Danielle Laurie hanging out at our set in right field. Seven home runs on the day so far. Two in this game alone, Danielle. Yeah, and it just screams to me pitchers have to be a little bit more careful with where they're throwing the ball. No, I don't feel like the pitchers have been too dominant, but you're right. The batters are taking advantage of mistakes, and that's hard to do in big-time moments like today. All right, we'll be back after this game. And, Beth, I don't know if you've heard, but they're calling this the year of the long ball. That was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, I, I feel a kinship with you, constantly keeping the pitchers and hitters separated <laughs> on the set like I'm trying to do in the booth up here. I'm with you, Kayla Bro. I'm with hey, you, hey, girl. Hey, Danielle Laurie, I was reading her <laughs> face totally. She, a little bit of a bad attitude, like, you know, people are bagging on the pitchers. Oh. <laughs> mind it, mind it, mind you. Both of you were fabulous hitting pitchers. I don't want to sell you short. <laughs> We got, a, we got a good one here, 1-1, one, one, Oklahoma State, Florida to the top of the sixth. We've already seen an extra inning game today, Arizona beating Washington in eight, three to one. Riley Bayless, top of the order here, so a good opportunity for the Cowgirls against Kelly Barnhill, who has retired 14 of the last 16 since giving up the Shao home run, which remains her only hit allowed. Has been spectacular in the postseason, now in her ninth appearance. Just six earned runs allowed. In nearly 70 innings of work.
the bad news during the regular season was there were a lot of games like this where they were trying to scratch together runs. So the good news now is they know this feeling. They've been here a ton before, have where the Gators. They live. And the pressure's been on Barnhill to not give up those runs and just be patient, wait for her offense. And the counterpart, Riley Bayless, trying to mm -hmm. scrap something together here for the Cowgirls. And scrap's the right word. This is a very gritty Oklahoma State team. Well, the best hitter, Sam Shaw, is on deck. And a lot of times we'll speak about those that hit after the best hitter. But sometimes it's just important who hits in front of. Mm -hmm. Riley Bayes gets on base. It allows them to pitch more to Sam Shaw because they don't want to then put a runner in scoring position. When will that first postseason hit come for Riley? It has been a long wait. Riley Bayless gives me energy. <laughs> she doesn't sit still. Called strike three. Seventh for Barnhill and another showdown with Shao. Sam Shao has been the show for this team for college stop. Not only can she hit, but she's got some attitude. She will not only hit it out of the park, but she'll flip that bat. She has something that brings out emotion within her team, emotion from other players, shoot, emotion from anybody watching the game because of not only what she does at the plate, but right after she hits it. We talked to her about it yesterday, and it's funny, this is my first time meeting her, and there's like this expectation that she's gonna come in with this just total attitude, but she is a sweet, kind, just very intense about the way she plays the game. Chow gets a hold of another one, deep center field, the bat flip as she rounds the bases and Oklahoma State has the lead. Emotion. I mean, she takes a pitch up in the zone and crushes it. Not only crushes it out, but it goes up high. Watch her take the bat. I mean, I don't even know what this is. This is an over the head. I'm going to flip this thing all the way to my dugout. And that's what she does. She stares at her own team, gets them fired up, and that's what she feels after that. Wow, and on a 1-0 count at some point, as a pitcher, you have to think to yourself, where am I going to throw her? I'd throw at her, her toes. And look at how clutch. 11 of those home runs have tied a game or given them the lead. And the two home runs tonight have twice given them an advantage. I'll be surprised if they throw to her even after this. Yeah. I mean, two runs on both of her home runs and on two very different pitches. One away, going away from the zone. That one more middle and in, up in the zone. And nobody else has really touched Barnhill. So with one out here late in the game, I'm thinking I wouldn't give her anything. Let her chase stuff out of the zone. Well, she may not need to come up again. No, the hour is getting late. And now you've got to, you've got to get those demons out of your head. Those, yes. those little devils that are telling you, you got this, you can win this thing. But you still got work to do. They have not won here at the World Series since 1998, and they are smelling it now. Barnhill over to first, two down. Samantha Shaw solo in the first, solo in the sixth. Michaela Richburg is 
Struck out in the first, got hit by a pitch in the fourth. The stunning upset of the four seed on the road in the Supers. And now up on the five seed here opening night. will have Lorenz, Lindemann, and Adams looking to respond in the bottom half of the inning. Samantha Shaw gets Oklahoma State the lead back. Samantha Shaw with the big home run. The second solo shot of the day puts the Cowgirls on top. Two to one, Pokes. That's the nightcap coming up. But we've got a dandy right here with Oklahoma State and Florida following on the heels of both Arizona and UCLA, winning with home runs earlier today. Sam Shaw has a pair of them for the Pokes and a 2-1 lead. They're six outs away from a win against the two-time national champion Gators. But hold on a tick. Here comes the top for Florida. And Lorenz, Lindemann, and Adams. And Samantha Shaw, the two home runs, the only hits they've got off of Kelly Barnhill. She has retired nine in a row since Alex Voss singled the lead off the third inning. On well, late in the game, I think that becomes the most important pitch to Samantha Shaw right now, and that's that off-speed pitch coming in about 54 miles an hour. And one of the most dangerous hitters in the country stepping up for Florida, the senior Lorenz in her third World Series. came in right after they won their back-to-back -back championships. And down on the count here, one and two. And did not like that last call. She got the same call her last at bat. Drop ball away that's off the plate. And both times reacted. But then you have to kind of come back around, understand the strike zone. You can't change it. The last thing you want to do, too, is make the umpire behind the plate mad. Lorenz base hit and the tying run aboard for Florida. Let's check in with Holly. Well, after that big home run, Samantha Shaw came back out to the circle to start pitching this half inning. And she very first pitch she threw in is her warm-up pitch rolled in on the ground. She turned to her teammates and was like, I got to calm down, used her hands in a calming down motion. She's got to get that adrenal down right now so she can pitch her team out of this game. Facing Kendall Lindemann, 0 for 2 tonight. but with the power to put Florida up with one swing. And that's one of the hardest things to do as a hitting pitcher is to make sure that you're in control of every pitch. Big moments with the bat, whatever's going on behind you defensively. Smitty, how did you, when you were up to bat, hit such a big home run that she just hit, and then be able to come right back in the circle and be calm, not be the bat chucker. 
I, I pitched my entire career thinking that the game was 0-0. I mean, you, you almost had to. You just had to, to go out there and have that short-term memory that you, everything is behind you, and it's a 0-0 game, and just fighting and knowing that every pitch counts. But even with your heart racing after running around the bases and jacking up your teammates, whoop, there's the pitch Holly spoke of. It's a mind game. I mean, a lot of pitching is being in control of your mind, your breaths. Lindemann chased it out of the zone. One down and a big K of Kendall. And we hear a lot of pitchers talk about it. Kelly Barnhill talks about her hype number, but look at Samantha Shaw. Look at the way she's gonna go up. She is full of energy. She plays her game at that max energy level. A and she knows that. Anna Adams. Florida now 0 for 7 tonight with a runner on base. And Adams both in the fir first and third innings had a chance to drive in a runner from second. to second, nice backhand, the toss to first, second for one, and safe at the bag at first was Adams. Almost a spectacular double play. Tell you what, we've talked so much about shortstops in this World Series. Maddie Sue Montgomery has shown it off, and this isn't just the first time she's used her glove, because that's all you can do on this. Get rid of it as quick, and look at just taking off enough to get it to her shortstop. Oh, man, that is so close to turning a double play. Great glove at second base by Maddie Sue Montgomery. Hoover. Fouled that one off her leg. Jamie Hoover in the Gainesville Super Regional with the game on the line, with their season on the line, delivers the base hit to score. Amanda Lorenz to win it in extra innings over Tennessee. That's how they survived and advanced to this World Series. And now Hoover trying to make something happen here for the Gators, who are now 0 for 8 with a runner on base tonight. Don't forget, we've got the top seed, Oklahoma Sooners coming up against Alabama. A rematch of the 2012 National Championship when the Crimson Tide went dancing in the rain to win the title. Infield pop-up, handled by Pennington. A base runner on, a base runner stranded. To the seventh we go, a one run, state lead. Our Capital One rewarding performance. How about Samantha Shaw? Not once, but twice. When you got two hits and your only runs, the only hits, and you're the pitcher in the circle, throw the bat down. Sam Shaw, she's done it, brought the hammer. She's brought her A game, as she always does. She's who got this team, this Oklahoma State team, to the World Series. Right now, just an inning away from winning their first game. And how about for the first time in 38 years, a pitcher has gone yard twice in a game. Samantha Shaw, their two hits. Both of them out in a 2-1 lead, so they're three outs away from staying in the winner's bracket tomorrow night. 
in a matchup against Oklahoma or Alabama. And it's a shallow center on the run. Alex Voss will get there. One down. Well, after game one of the NBA Finals tonight, stick around for Sports Center with SVP on ESPN. Tim and Doris and Stephen A will break everything down for you. And uh, the latest on the Yankees and the Sox at Sports Center right after the Warriors Raptors over on ABC. I think New York is up seven and a half right now on Boston. In you're the not East. A, you're not a Yankee fan. No. Yeah, I think they are. That's a good number. <laughs> Could change quickly, though, these next three Always nights. fun to yes. watch those two get together. Cheyenne Factor here with one down. The baseball's version of the Arizona UCLA oh, nice. rivalry. Well played, Smitty. Florida, Alabama. That's right. That Arizona UCLA rivalry renewed tomorrow night here in OKC. And we have said it before, we'll say it again. 35 of the 38 national champions won their opening game here at the World Series. Very hard to come out of the loser's bracket. Factor. That one will get out of play. And if you can win tonight and tomorrow night, you've got an 85% chance of reaching the champ series. Factor just a little bit early on that. Rise ball up and in. Somebody, did you wear orange and back black overalls when you were at school? Not overalls. <laughs> <laughs> but we did have a couple uniforms that were all orange. It felt like a big pumpkin at times, but <laughs> breaking out our brightest orange. Some of the Oklahoma unis. State likes to say. Mm -hmm. How about Oklahoma State? Have not blown a lead all year. Rounds it to second. Adams is there. Two down. I don't, do we have some of the orange? Or what, did, what, what did she wear back in the day? I, I want to see the hair. Let's, what did Smitty look oh, like? Oh, man. no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Mike Gundy rocks the mullet, too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tradition at Oklahoma State. But you thought the sweater, Gundy was the first. The sweater with the, I mean, there's so much to break down. Smitty do we have the telestrator? I probably had boots on there, too, and a really <laughs> pe tight <laughs> pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, some of that orange. Smitty. Uh, those were the days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Still, still long pants smile. there, I think. They, they didn't yeah. break out the shorts just yet? Uh, we, we had many a shorts, too. Mm. I, I, a lot of people don't realize I was number 52 because we had hand-me-down basketball uniforms. No way. Yes. <laughs> That's how far our That's sport funny. has come, folks. Mm. Yep, absolutely. Jeez. And on behalf of the uh, old school basketball players like myself, I can tell you those uniforms were not comfortable. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 82 wins though, Smite with nine no-nos. Who handed down the sweaters with the collared shirts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you had just uh, wore the parka, yeah. <laughs> Can we How just about, leave that on a split screen for the rest of the game? How about, was it, uh, was <laughs> like it D, D Brewer and Lisa yeah. Harvey, Dina Carter? Yep, Sherry Johnson from Moore, Oklahoma. World Series team in the late 80s. Great, great shortstop. A strikeout for Barnhill. She's got eight, but it is Oklahoma State with the lead, and the Gators down to their last chance. Winners earlier today, Arizona and UCLA. And the two biggest rivals in the sports history will tussle tomorrow night. Winner of this one will watch our next game to see who they will face. Beth Mullins, Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza, and Holly Rowe with you tonight. And it is the last chance for Florida. To the bottom of the seventh we go. Five, six, and seven to face Samantha Shaw. 
Samantha not only throwing a four hitter, but the first pitcher in history to hit two home runs in a World Series game. And she has their only hits of the night. You think she sees another strike the rest of this tournament as a hitter? Not unless they have to throw to her. Sophia Reynoso, 0 for 2, although the Gators have gotten the lead off on base in three of their first six innings here. last week, the walk-off win in the Super Regional Final. And now trying to walk off tonight. The biggest bat tonight, Jordan Roberts. The home run back in the second inning is on deck. The skater team has played in a lot of tight games this year. Backs up against the wall is nothing new. Got the home run hitter on deck. Reynoso lines one out to left and a base hit. I like that she tried to sell the catch. Chelsea Alexander out in left field tried to come up and say that she caught it. Definitely hits the ground first. But hey, without replay, you can try to act it out. I did that a few times. <laughs> Am I correct? Got it? I got it. Big game. So the tying run aboard, the winner at the plate now for Florida. She's done it once tonight. Can she match Sam Shaw with a second? It'll be what she's looking for because they have come back inside knowing that she hit away with power. I mean, she blasted this thing out to right center. So if they go away at all, it's going to be out of the zone. Otherwise, look for them to come in. Oh. And she got two strikes on the inner half of the plate. You got to know as a hitter, if I hit her out, she's going to come in. And off. And that pitch in at 54 miles an hour. Got just enough of it to scoot through the left side. And that'll push the tying run into scoring position. It's a 67 mile an hour pitch on the inside corner. Jams up. Roberts, but just enough to get it into that 5-6 hole right past Naomi, who was playing up the middle. Their first run, or first hit, excuse me, with a runner on base tonight. And a pinch runner, that, what would be the game winner over at first base is Amanda Bean coming on. It's been the story all year long, carried offensively by Lorenz and Lindemann. In the postseason, the others have all helped out and gotten them to the World Series. Can the others push one across here to tie it? Caraway, a couple of ground outs tonight. As Lorenz and Lindemann, cheerleaders for a while. Two pitch, grounded to short. They get the lead runner and the force out at third on the flip by Naomi. One down.
It's all about positioning. Naomi in a great spot is going to flip it back, but that is trust that Sydney Pendleton, the third baseman who is playing up, is going to be able to come back and get that lead runner out. So important in tight games and in tight situations, you get the lead runner. Jordan Matthews, who knocked Sam Shaw and Texas A&M out of the tournament last year in the Super Regionals. But losing by a run on the scoreboard as Barnhill looks on. Grounded to second, Montgomery for one over to first, not in time. Tying run 60 feet away with two outs. Maddie Sue just took a second to get it out of her glove. You can see her just, it gets caught up. Right there, that's the difference of a double play. She's been on fire all night long with her defense, and it's that one play, and you wonder if it makes a difference right here because that allows this game to continue. They still get an out. The number nine hitter, Alex Voss, is due up. She is all that stands between Oklahoma State and their first World Series win since 1998. And this is where Shao and company have to go right at Voss, that number nine hitter. The last thing you want to do up is bring up Amanda Lorenz. Lorenz on deck. Two hits tonight. Lily Mann is now the pinch runner at first base. She would be the game winner with Bean at third, hoping to tie it up for Florida. Lost a late lead all year long. Boss the grounder to Montgomery at second over to first, and that'll do it. Second upset of the day at the Women's College World Series as the Oklahoma State Cowgirls knock off Florida for their first World Series win since 1998, and they stay in the winner's bracket and will play tomorrow night. Samantha Shaw strands the tying run at third, and her two home runs the difference in a 2-1 win. Well, I'm fitting that Maddie Sue Montgomery is gonna make the last out of the game, tossing that ball over to Richburg at first. First and third situation, ball jammed up on Voss. Montgomery over to Richburg. And Chow, star of the game. Two solo home runs and a complete game in the circle. Kelly Barnhill, eight strikeouts, only given up the two hits, but they were the biggest ones. Solo shot in the first, solo again in the sixth. 
And three of the four spots are now filled for winner's bracket Friday night. Arizona and UCLA tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And Oklahoma State will be in the late game. And so will Samantha Shaw. She's with Holly. The last time Oklahoma State got a win here in the Women's College World Series, you were two years old. How did you grow up so fast tonight in front of everybody to get this win? We didn't do anything to out of out of the ordinary. You know, we stayed to us. We had fun. I don't think there's ever a time in our dugout where we weren't loud and we weren't in this. Even when they tied it up, we knew that we were going to stay us, stay having fun, and that's what allowed us to win this game. You stepped into the box, your very first at bat. Tell me about that home run. What did you do? I just tried to stay through the ball. Uh, she got ahead of me, uh, two quick pitches, and I knew that that wasn't the end. I knew I still had to fight. Um, I still had to fight for my team in the box. And she left the pitch up, and I drove it that way. Second home run, a little more dramatic. The flip came out. Why then? Why then? I knew that one off the bat was out. My first one, I didn't know exactly, and it put us up. Um, and, and that's exactly what my team needed. They said we needed at least one more run to win this game, and it's exactly what happened. Runners on the corner. The go-ahead run is on base. You're trying to get out of this game. How hard were those last few outs? Um, I mean, there was a little nerves, but my defense behind me is solid. And Sue making that last out, man, you couldn't have written a better story. She's been so solid over there. Um, some great plays made on the infield by my defense, and I'm just so happy. This is the first trip to the Women's College World Series for any of you on your team to play here on this field for Oklahoma State. How can you guys build on this momentum? Taking it one game at a time. You know, we're going to get another team, we're going to get another game. And knowing that when we're on and we're good, we're really good. And so just keeping that, not making any moment too big, uh, will go far. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Holly and Samantha Shaw. The two home run night tonight. And she was known coming in tonight for her emotion, for using her at bats, the way she plays the game to fire up her team. This one, the go ahead. She chucks the bat at her team and knows they will get the win. 2-1, Oklahoma State over Florida. Still to come, it's Alabama and Oklahoma in about 30 minutes here on ESPN2. Now let's get you out to the set with Molly McGrath, Kayla Bro, and Danielle Laurie.